As we go all the way back uh, to Genesis chapter 1, uh, I want to remind you as we go back there, um, continue in your daily Bible reading, amen? Continue to read that each and every day uh, as it changes us um, inside out, and praise the Lord for that. So as we begin here in this study, uh, now we could go through the book of Genesis and spend probably at least three to four years through the whole book of Genesis. Well, that's not my plan uh, to do, uh, but the Lord willing, um, this is a message that is from the book of beginnings. If you notice here when you see the word Genesis, Genesis is not a Hebrew word. Uh, the Hebrews, way back, they titled this book the Book of Beginnings because that's what Genesis is. It is a beginning. Uh, it was translated in the Greek and then in the Latin and then by the time the English language got a hold of it, we see the title of Genesis. Now, some of the items here is going to be very common sense items but I want you to see, when you read in the New Testament, Old Testament as well, especially in the New Testament, when you read in there, you read of people being puffed up and people uh, boasting and, and prideful and all of these things and not listening to the Word of God, not paying attention to the Word of God, making their own definitions of the Word of God, uh, chasing down the rabbit down their own hole, figuring out the Bible. And listen, there is so many churches out there that miss the first step. The first step of learning your Bible. That's the book of Genesis. If you miss the book of Genesis, the rest of it ain't going to make much sense. Yet there is people today that want to just smear the creation account. If you smear the creation account, then the Bible begins to fall like dominoes. You kick the, the book of Genesis like a domino, the rest of the dominoes are going to fall. Without Genesis, Revelation doesn't make sense. Neither will Ephesians. Neither does Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Malachi. None of it's going to make sense. Zechariah's uh, eight night visions, forget it, it's not going to make sense. Well, what about a sinner saved by grace? Without Genesis, you don't know what that means. Why? Because in chapter 3, what happened to mankind? We fell. And then we begin to look up words like depravity because we can't make it to God on our own. And we need a Savior. And then we see in Genesis 3.15 the first prophecy that Christ would come and defeat Satan. And we understand that to be the cross. Without Genesis, Genesis is the beginning of that silver line that runs clear through the rest of the pages of the Bible. So I'm going to give you some brief, some facts, to, some things to chew on, to look at in Genesis. But I want to show you even what is worse than most churches could do, and that is to take away the account of creation. I read online... And there's different online sources that talks about, oh, you know, Genesis is a literal book. It's a literal beginnings and, and so many things they add to it. you got to be so careful. But I did read, they surveyed in this area 106 Christian denomination churches. 106 churches. How many out of 106 of these churches that taught the Bible every Sunday 
They had their preachers and Sunday school teachers. How many of these churches, out of 106, how many of them believed in the literal creation? Five. So this is in our backyard more than you know. You say, well, thank God we're Baptists. Well, there's a lot of Baptists that destroy the creation account. Baptists from long ago and those uh, Baptists of today. Folks, it is so easy to do. And when you begin to smear the creation, the rest of the Bible just falls like dominoes. It won't make any sense. You can't separate. You can't divide the word. of. You can't do anything because you don't have a beginning point. The beginning point is the book of beginnings, which is the book of Genesis. And so when you muddy up those verses, you're not going to be able to get uh, anything much out of the Bible. Oh, you can go on and figure out the Bible. Of course, uh, many, many things in the Bible. But you can't get as far as you think you could if you smear the Genesis account. Now, you say, what are you talking about? Well, here's one. Moses. <laughs> oh boy, Moses. Killed that Egyptian boy that was killing one of the Hebrew children out in the desert. Renegade. Rebel. Uh, was trained in Egypt. Saw the burning bush. Didn't have any college education that guy was just probably unusable to God. Some heretic shoved out in the desert somewhere. No. Moses was doing exactly, although he may not have realized it, what God would have him to do. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Yes. You say, Moses, the guy... Yes, the very first five books of the Bible that we call the Torah, if you wanted a theological word, it's called the Pentateuch, which means five. The first five books of the Bible was written by Moses and many, many colleges, universities, and churches said, no way, because Moses didn't have the talent. He didn't have the education. And I'd have to agree. Neither do I. Neither do you. That's why the Bible says that the Holy Spirit guides the writers of the Bible. Yes, we use our own little personal flavors when, when the writers of the Bible would write. But God carried us, borne us along, the Scripture says, not me, talking about the writers, as they wrote out his word, his divine plan for mankind. So many discount Moses as the author of these first five books, uh, which he would have been writing in early, mid 1400s BC. So here's a question. And boy, they love to throw this in front of your face as a Christian, especially if you teach Bible, they're going to come after you. They're going to say, oh, wait a minute. And guess what? Some of these folks is in our backyard. Some of them are independent Baptist churches. Some of them are very influential Christians in the world today. And some of these men that preach and teach and write about this, I just love some of their writings and some of their books. They're down on my library shelf. But folks, they miss it. They miss it. In Genesis. So, how old is the earth? Well, turn your science channel on on TV. You ought to know there's a lot of people on there. Is it a million years old? No, it's billions of years old. 200 billion years old. Are they right? Let's take it down to a billion. Is it one billion years old? Well, wait a minute. Let, let's go ahead and take it down. Th that's too high. Well, let's take it down to a million. Is it a million years old? Oh, 
well, let's just pick a safe number of 100,000. Maybe the planet's 100,000 years old. By the way, we got rocks and fossils and bones all over the world. And when we put that in the carbon uh, 14 dating uh, system, some of this is millions of years old. Maybe we can cut it down to 100,000, and that way we can get the idea that the Genesis account is someone, somewhat correct. No. No. That's not the literal translation of Genesis. So how old is the earth? According to God's word, approximately 6,000 years old. No, you see... That Tyrannosaurus Rex came through and was killing cavemen millions of years ago. Were you there? I wasn't there. Neither were the scientists. I read a story about this carbon-14 dating. This man was a Christian man, and he purposely took a big rock um, out of his driveway. There was a dump truck that had came in, and gave him some gravel out of the quarry, and, and he was raking through um, the gravel, and um, one of the pieces of gravel was, was pretty, pretty big, and he didn't want that in his driveway, so he laid it aside, and he took that rock, and he put it in his oven, and he baked it, and he coated it with all types of oils, and he baked it again, and he baked it again and took it to the carbon-14 dating and said he had found this rock and it looked really old. So when the test came back, this rock was over 3 million years old. There's no way possible. So scientists, folks, has it wrong. Some biblical authors and preachers and teachers, colleges and universities, that's not what I read in the Genesis account. You say, but there's so many things. Watch the signs in the History Channel. No, I've listened to some of that. And um, although it's fascinating and interesting in some points, um, I'm going to stick to my Bible. And that would be the Genesis account. So you say, now wait a minute, here you are thinking that you're smart, and you go through and you say, well, the Old Testament is how old? Well, according to God's word, the Old Testament is approximately 4,000 years old. You say, ah, you can't figure that out. Are you sure? All you got to do is count up the generations. Adam lived to be 900 and, and so forth. And you count backwards. And when you count backwards from the very last book, all the way in, using the generations in the Old Testament, you're going to come to approximately 4,000 years. He said, I, I don't believe that. I, I just think those Tyrannosaurus Rex and those plant-eating uh, animals, and it just doesn't work. Uh, it's, yes, it does work. Because that's what the Bible teaches. So then you go forth, as your 4,000 would be probably the year of creation, you could say, and as it works its way down to zero, and we'll just use that lightly, and then Christ is born, and then now we're up to 2,024, I mean approximately 6,000 years old. I just don't get it. I've watched too many TV shows. Well, maybe that's mine and your problem because it doesn't work. It doesn't work with the Bible. Although, oh, now wait a minute. We can make loopholes in Genesis and make it fit what we think is true. And then you'll be a scientist. You understand what I'm trying to say? Genesis is the beginning of time. The very beginning of time. Turn with me in your Bibles as we're in here in verse 1. Uh, Genesis 1, verse 1 and verse 2. And if you would, let's uh, stand to reverence the reading of God's word in his house today. Genesis chapter 1, just verses 1 and 2. You said that shouldn't take long. Uh, you know me by now. Amen. 
verse 1 through verse 2. And I want you to um, listen to these words as I read them slowly. And I want them to sink in because uh, we got a lot, um, lot to cover this morning. So um, verse 1, verse 2 says, In the beginning, that was the title, the Hebrew title, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2, and the earth was without form. It was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Father in heaven, Lord, we just praise you and glorify you for your word. Father, let us today trust in your word with all of our heart, mind, body, and soul. Let us trust in your word, for in your word is power. In your word we find creation. In your word we find so much mercy and love and grace. Father, let us be attentive to thy word today. Father, please let me stay out of the way. And Father, let your word be taught here today. Father, we just give you the praise here today. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. So let's get moving on this. And so Genesis gives us the account of the creation of man, the fall of man. Now, going through Genesis, through the Abrahamic covenant. What does that mean? The promises that God gave Abraham. You say, well, that don't matter to me because that's that Israel over there. It does matter to you because through Israel, you receive the spiritual blessings that you now have. You say, what do you mean? We're the spiritual offspring of Abraham. You say, I'm not really sure. I wrote this down just for you. And I will bless them, God says, that bless thee. Who's he talking about? Abraham. And curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth, all families of the earth shall be blessed. We run into Abram in chapter 11, chapter 12, or chapter 12 of Genesis. We begin to see the blessings for you and for me. And uh, we don't have to be born in Israel. We don't have to be a resident of the nation of Israel. We are his spiritual offspring. And through Israel comes the blessings of God even to the Gentiles. So as we begin to look here, um, Genesis also, when you read through Genesis, it gives you uh, a lot of answers to the modern issues in the Middle East. It does. Wish we had time to go more into that. But also in the book of Genesis, that when Churches, organizations, uh, assemblies, colleges, universities, Baptists, non-Baptists, cults, spiritual movements, call it whatever flavor you want. When they begin to downgrade and they begin to explain away Genesis, although some may not realize this, but what you're doing is you're explaining away Jesus, the very one that saved you from your sins. You're explaining him away. Well, Jesus was not in the Old Testament. He's surely not in Genesis. <laughs> Way too early for Jesus. You see, he was born in Matthew. And, well, I understand that. Sarah was laughing at the tent door when, when the Lord came through. And what did the Lord, it says the Lord in Scripture, what did the Lord promise Sarah? I'm going to come back again next year, and you're going to have a son. What did she do? She laughed. Sarah was right at 90 years old. Abraham was 100. Come on, Sarah, don't you beat up that woman because Abraham laughed as well. And the Lord's saying, what do you think is so funny? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Do you think that's just a mere angel? 
when you look up the word Lord, uh, it is the word Elohim. Ooh. Also expressed is the word Jehovah. Is this angel just a mere angel going by to get something to eat and going by the tent door? Folks, that was Jesus. And then when you also read in Genesis, uh, you say, well, you know, I don't really believe that Jesus was in the book of Genesis, or as far as that matters, even in the Old Testament. Well, if you don't believe that Jesus always was, he's the Son of God because he is God, if you don't believe that and you don't think Jesus is in the Old Testament, then Jesus says, you don't believe in me. You say, well, how, how could you preach that? I'm not. Uh, John did. John chapter 5, listen to this. Jesus speaking, he says, search the scriptures. For in them you think that you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. But if you had believed Moses, you would believe me. Huh. And then in Luke 24, he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Folks, when you begin to smear the Genesis account, everything else starts to have smear marks on it throughout the whole Word of God. So, and what is the Lord there in Genesis 18 when he was with Abraham and Sarah and they were laughing about the child? Uh, when we look at the word in Hebrew, actually Jehovah, it was the eternal self-existing one. Who would that be? Wow, that's not hard to figure out. That is the Lord himself. Well, let's go to our text here. Uh, the message is just beginning, by the way. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning... God created the heaven and the earth. Let's do some facts, and then I want to get on to where um, the smear marks begin, if we make it that far today. Well, this verse is written just in general terms. In the beginning, God created. What did he create? Well, the heaven and the earth. Remember that verse. Remember, it's just a general overlook, because later on, it's going to mean a whole lot uh, if we get that far today. Um, the creation account is not creature-centered. What do you mean by that? It is not man-centered. The Bible is not man-centered. But when you begin to write books, philosophies, theories, in colleges, university, and churches, when you begin to destroy the literal account of the Word of God in here in Genesis in creation, then you begin to put man in the center. Man is never the center in the Bible. God is. For we live to give man glory. Well, that doesn't even fit. For we live to glorify God. God is in the middle of all because it is God's word. The center focus in the Bible is God. And when you begin to say, well, I'm not so sure about that creation. I'm not really sure about that beginning. Well, I can tell you this much. I can't explain all of it, but I can tell you what I can do. I can believe it because God wrote it. He spoke it, and I believe it, and that's the end of it for me. And I hope it is for you. Uh, so this original creation is of the entire universe. In the beginning God created. Now this is not the beginning of all things. This is the beginning of creation. Uh, Resheth, beginning. God created the earth from nothing. 